Welcome to the South African Shark Conservancy. I'm Amy. I'm from France. I'm doing a PhD here, so I'm going to be here for two years or more. I'm Paolo, I'm from Italy, I'm a master's student and I'm doing the research for my thesis here at the South African Shark Conservancy. So today we're going to show you around the shark lab that lays in the middle of Walker Bay in Hermanus. At the South African Shark Conservancy we study sharks. Uh, there are more than 500 species of sharks, but people mostly know the most famous one, like, like the great white shark, the whale shark, etc. And sharks occupy a variety of habitats, from the very deep waters to shallow waters and even fresh water, like the bull shark. Sharks are characterized by having exposed gills, gills from 5 to 7, while the bony species have uh, um, the gills covered by the operculum. Uh, sharks have also a cartilaginous skeleton, so it's not made out of bone, but out of cartilage, like our ears and our nose, and so it is more flexible, but it doesn't uh, fossilize. Sharks are also characterized by having the body covered by uh, dermal denticles, that are scales with the same structure of teeth, so the shark skin is actually made of teeth, teeth-like structure. We, they also have a sort of sixth sense that is um, composed by the pool of Lorenzini, that are uh, very small uh, pores that are able to detect uh, electric uh, cha changes in the electric field um, generated by muscles and heartbeat. So they are able to find the praise uh, just based on the changes in the electric field, the water made by the heartbeat of this uh, picture. Okay, so to study sharks on a daily basis, we usually go fishing. So that's what we use to fish. It's a handline, so with a little weight and a hook. We make sure the barb is off to make sure we can take the hook every time we catch a shark. When we catch a shark, uh, what we do is tag them and measure them to sh see how much they grow. So we use those small tag or D tag for small shark from 30 to 60 centimeters. And those big tag, it's called A tags for more than 60 centimeters. We use those applicator, so we put the, the tag inside and we tag the shark just under the first dorsal fin. Then we take a fin clip that we put in the small vials for DNA ana analysis. Another thing we do is catch shark by hand, snorkeling just outside of the lab. And also we do drugs. So this is a drug. Uh, we put one kilogram of sardine in the bait canister with what we call chum. And with a GoPro camera, we film from for one hour to see what species can be found in a certain area and see the diversity of sharks and fish around the water bay. Okay, so here is the web tab. You can see we have big tanks where we put sharks in captivity for either to show around that people have in tools or to do some experiments. Here's a dark shark shark. So as you can see, uh, behind the eye, there are these two small uh, holes that are called spiracles and they are used by these sharks that live close to the bottom to breathe. Otherwise, if they, if they are breathing with the mouth, the sand and other uh, dirt and sediment will come in the mouth, damaging the gills. But of course, they also have the gill, the gizzlies. So, uh, since they are shark, the gizzlies are unprotected and these species in particular have five gizzlies. Then, these are the dorsal fins. Uh, all sharks, except few species, have two dorsal fins. And we put the tag on the side of the first dorsal fin. Then we have the pectoral fins and the pelvic fins that are used to uh, stabilize the shark while swimming and the caudal fin that is used for propulsion. In this case, the caudal fin is very straight because these, these species live close to the bottom. So it doesn't need the, uh, it doesn't need a lot of um, to move a lot using the, the tail. And this is another species. It's very close, closely related to the pyjama cat shark. It's closed leopard cat shark, as you can see from the, from the pattern of the, of the skin. The mouth of these sharks is uh, very small. The teeth are very small and pointy, and they're used to catch mainly mollusks like uh, um, octopus, cuttlefish, and squids. This is another species, it's the pyjama cat shark. It's not very calm, uh, <laughs> but this is to show you how a male 
how we can recognize a male. So here you can see there are the two claspers. These are the, are the reproductive organs that are used by males to reproduce. And by, the, by looking at the dimension of the clasper, we can tell the maturity stage. So this, they are divided from one, they are immature, to three, they are ready to mate. This is a different species, still endemic to South Africa. It's a preferred shy shark. You can see the difference between this one and the dark shy shark that we just showed you with the coloration, which is really orange, and look actually like a puff adder, like the viper. That's where the name comes from. We're going to show you guys how to measure it. So to measure it, we use this measuring mat. You can see the scale is already on it. We cover the head with a cloth to make sure that I don't stress too much and put the snout against this uh, metal wall. So the first measurement is total length. So it's from the snout to the end of the color pin. So this one is 44. Second measurement is pre codal So it's just before the color pin here. And the last measurement is interdosal, so it's between the two dorsal fins here. And then we put the tag in, like you can see just next to the first dorsal, and we take a fin clip on the first dorsal that we put in a vial for DNA analysis. Another measurement we take is the sex, so this one is a female, because there's no clasper. And it can go back in this way. The last tank we have is called touch tank because people coming and visiting us can actually touch the animals uh, that are present in this tank. A lot of animals are invertebrates that we catch on the rocks outside of the lab. So we have some uh, echinoderms such as the sea urchin, sea urchins. Then we have other echinoderms, there are starfish. Other invertebrates that are in the touch tanks are mollusks such as these uh, sea snails. This one and that these these species will eventually grow as big as these. Then we have the top shell. It's a very cool uh, sea snails, a very bright red and pink coloration. Then we have some nudibranchs. This, for example, this small here is a cow nudibranch that has a very big mouth that is used to prey upon other small animals. And then we have. Uh, a variety of species of anemones, so closely related to corals, and they use the tentacles to catch uh, small prey and small plankton in the water. Another species we have in our touch tank is dark shy shark, like really tiny, small baby dark shy shark. So you can see one of them here. This one is actually called Naya. So you can see she has really clear patterns and really cool patterns on her head, along with nice yellow eyes. This is a female. Another one we have, they're all hiding all the time. So you can see how they use a um, little hole behind the eyes to breathe when they are in the sand. So this one is called Calypso, another female. doesn't like to be waken up, apparently. <laughs> so you can see she has almost the same pattern as Naya that we just saw. So probably, like, uh, cat shark lay eggs two by two, so probably from the same pair of eggs. Another one is unfortunately unnamed yet. This one is still a female, and you can see the difference in patterns between those two. In different coloration, different patterns. So this is a baby cuttlefish that we found in a rock pool during low tide. So we're keeping it and maybe you will see it will change color really fast. And it's living quite nicely with the, the other sharks. <laughs> and <laughs> this is the last shark. So this one is a male. So you can see really, really tiny claspers here. And also, again, different patterns on his head. So this one has more dots and really darker, but this is the smallest one. 
This one is like 20.6 centimeters because we measure them every week. Because baby sharks are the data that are missing everywhere because we don't catch them fishing. So we are measuring them every week to see how much they grow and how fast they grow. We're going to keep them until they grow to 30 centimeters so they can be tagged and released in the wild. So here we keep the egg cases of the different shark species. So this one is a leopard cat shark. Those with the stripes are pro feather shy sharks. And the big dark one is from a dark shy shark. So some of them are really advanced. Like this one, you can see a full shark inside with the dots. So this is going to be a leopard and it's going to hatch really soon, like in within two weeks, I think. And another one who's really cool, it's this one. You can see a baby, baby, baby shark inside. So this one's like one of the first stages in the egg. Because the first thing is you're going to see like a dot, like in a chicken egg then a shape, kind of a shark. Then it's gonna go external gills that you can actually see. And then that's gonna go internal with the formation of the eye. And the last thing is gonna be the formation of the skin. So that's why on the first one I showed you, you can see the dots because it's the very last stage to before it goes out of the egg and become a real baby shark. And it takes usually from nine to 12 months. No one really knows because it depends on the temperature and also the species. A very important thing when doing uh, research in general is to have uh, data recorded as clear as possible. So here when we go out fishing, we record the date, the location, how the, the catch method, so hand line, rod and reel, or snorkeling, our names, and the time when we uh, started and we ended. When we catch a shark, we record the time of capture, the species, the bait, because even the bait is it's very important to know the, the, the bait preferences of each species, if it was uh, recaptured, and then we record the morphometric data, so total length, precaudal length, interdorsal length, the sex, and if it's a male, the male maturity. Then the hook location, so where, um, where the hook was, in the mouth or external, uh, the hook size, so we know which, which hook is better for um, different species. And then we record the tag number and the fin clip number. These two numbers are very important to be uh, wrote down clearly without errors, because otherwise we will mess with the, with the data. Another kind of data we collect is on the babies. So this is the data sheet we use. We made that especially for the four babies we just showed, we just showed you in the test chain. So you can see, for example, this one is the biggest one we have. So we started a month ago, a little more than a month ago. And you can see the length grow to from 19.5 to 22. So we grew like almost three centimeters already in a month, which is super big. They are small enough so we can also measure the weight, which can be important to have a, a length weight relationship. And otherwise the same measurements that we take for the big ones, except that we take them more often to see really how fast they grow. Another important thing to record are the uh, environmental data. So water temperature, wind direction, speed, uh, air temperature, and important uh, parameters, uh, especially for the presence of, of fish in general, are the moon phase, the percentage of moon illuminated, the tidal state, and the air pressure, because these are variables that can uh, influence the presence of sharks in, uh, in the area. Here's Annika, one of our volunteers, feeding the sharks. So we feed them either uh, sardine or squid. It is their favorite uh, type of food. So we just put the piece of squid or sardine on those sticks and then uh, they will go for it. So eat the, the food and we usually feed them around the 10% of their body. At SASC we study also other cartilaginous fish. So not only sharks but also skates, rays and chimeras. And here you can see the differences. Not all the sharks are um, oviparous, so they lay eggs, but some of them give birth to like living um, babies. Uh, but this is a shark egg. So this is a leopard cat shark egg. And you can see the difference from a skate egg in the shape. And also this is a chimera egg. So different eggs for different species.
Say hi. Oh, it's tweezers. Hello. <laughs>